So this is an applied maths problem on statics related to friction. We're told of two situations. This particle of 10 kilograms, the least force acting up which will stop it moving down the plane is 19.6 newtons and the least force acting up along the plane which will make it slip up is 98 newtons. Two separate situations and we're asked to find the angle of inclination of the plane. So let's take each of those situations in turn and analyse the forces. We're told in the first situation, I'll call that A, that we have a weight force here, W, that W is mg, which is 10 times 9.8, which is 98 newtons. W is 98 newtons. We also have a contact force, labeled R. We have a force which is preventing the object from moving down. That's 19.6 newtons. And we have friction acting. Now in this case, the friction is acting up the way because it prevents the block from moving down the way. So there's our friction, mu r. There's our force, our contact force, and our weight. But the weight, of course, is split into two components. One parallel to the plane, so that's W sine A. Since the angle of the inclined plane is A, and therefore the angle between the weight and its component perpendicular to the plane is alpha also, or A rather. So that means we have W cos A. On the other hand, we also have a situation where we have the weight force, W, and this is situation B. We have the contact force, we have the component of the weight force, other component of the weight force, the force pulling up, which in this case is 98 newtons, and the components here, since A is the angle here, that's also the angle there, and so the component parallel to the slope is W sine A and perpendicular to the slope is W cos A. Now which way does friction act? In this situation friction is just about to be overcome to move the block up the slope. So if the movement is to be up then friction is acting down. So in this case we have a friction force mu r acting down the way. Well, is that all the forces we have? It seems so. Perhaps we should get rid of this working and do our analysis of the forces. So, for the situation A, our parallel forces will be F is 19.6 plus our mu r is equal to W sine A. We also have perpendicular forces which will give us r equals W cos A. 
in the second situation, we have our parallel forces, which in this case will be 98 newtons, our F, is equal to mu R plus W sine A. And similarly, we have our perpendicular forces, which is just R equals W cos A. So how can we combine these to good effect? We have our analysis here for both. And we can therefore say 19.6 plus mu r equals w sine a, or 19.6 plus mu r equals 10, or sorry, that should be of course 98 sine a. And we also have this, which is Substituting, that's 98 equals mu r plus 98 sine a. So we have two equations here. side for the first. And so if we add these, we can eliminate mu r, and that leaves an expression for sine a. So adding, we have 19.6 and 98, that's 117.6, the mu r's cancel, and that's equal to 2 times 98 sine a. Therefore we have 117.6 equals 196 sine a and so sine a is equal to 17 sorry 117.6 over 196 7.6 and 196 and so we can calculate our 